Life is an amazing podcast and it is presented and hosted by myself, Caro, and my sweet dog, Sparky. Give it up for him. I hope you're ready. Enjoy. And we're back for another episode of Go For Your Life. And as you know, I've been doing this series called Rescue Angels. And this is definitely an angel having angels, uh, Carly. We have connected through Instagram. And according to her, already a year ago nearly now, that we've um, kind of connected with each other. Carly, welcome. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure. You are in, do I say... It's was it South Carolina? No, uh, North Carolina. North mm-hmm. Carolina. Okay. Yeah. So we are talking from Lisbon to Carolina, Caro to Carolina. Um, <laughs> and yes, we we saw each other like we just kind of started chatting on Instagram, didn't we? Yeah, we. I don't even know how we found each other. Really, um, I think. Yeah, I think I saw you commenting on something rescue related, and I was like, "This lady mm-hmm. is awesome." <laughs> I have to. And then I saw your beautiful girls. Oh, and all these beautiful photos. Oh. Tell us a little bit about you and your beautiful ladies you have over there. Um, so we have uh, two dogs and a cat of, of our own. Um, the two dogs are the ladies you're referencing, <laughs> the special girls, <laughs> um, Meg and Pig. Uh, they were both, uh, we, we were fostering them uh, through our local shelter for different reasons. Um, and, uh, and they never left. Um, <laughs> they're living here today, happy and healthy. Yes. And they're so, they're so beautiful and they are not related, right? They are not. No, but they, they look, look like they could be related. Like twins. Yes. <laughs> um, they, they're called, people call them our tuxedo crew. Uh, cause they're yeah. people, black and light, black and white girls. Um, but they're not related. Uh, yeah. To, about two years apart that we rescued them. So, because you work, uh, you volunteer at uh, at a specific shelter in your in your area or something, Carly. Or, yeah, we have. Uh, there's a an open admission uh, animal shelter in our area. Um, we live in a very rural uh, part of of the state, um, so there's a lot um, there's a lot of dogs and cats that are brought in. Um, it's uh, you know as as happens in in rural areas like this. Mm. Uh, and so I volunteer with them. I kind of started fostering um, and I've progressed since then. Um, now I'm doing photography for them and uh, we lead um, foster orientation to get others in the community involved and we hold adoption events and uh, yeah, it keeps me busy. <laughs> because that's something that I also really feel when I first saw, you know, you on Instagram and I saw what you were mm-hmm. doing and stuff. I also really feel that you really use your skill like something that you're you know professionally good at as photography really as a skill that you use to help these these rescue dogs right don't don't you don't you agree yeah uh, well thank you yeah. <laughs> um i i would consider myself a professional um they i look so i picked good. up a camera um, maybe a couple of years ago now um my husband is a photographer and i just loved the art um and i saw an opportunity where i had all of all of the gear in front of me Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I saw a need at our local shelter. Um, and, and that's kind of how I started in photography. Uh, and, and since it's, yeah, it's made a really big impact, um, for the adoption rates at the shelter. Um, yeah. Because it, it makes a, a lot of, it makes a big difference, right? When you have a good photo and people can really see the being <clears throat> need. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Um, I think it, you know, um, so many, you know, not to knock cell phone photos, you can take amazing photos with a, with a cell phone now. Um, but I think so many times it's, there's not a lot of thought put into the photo or there's not enough time for staff to take photos, mm-hmm. you know, quality photos. Um, and so to have something that really captures an audience, you know, online instead of just scrolling past, um, yeah. it, it definitely has, has helped, you know, bring people into the shelter or, or get them home. Um, I even have, there's a woman in town who, um, who messages me often because she adopted, uh, this cat, his name was Tinker Tom. Um, mm-hmm. and he was a senior tabby cat who had been at the shelter for a while and he was so sweet. And I, I got this great photo of him and it was posted online and, and that was the reason she adopted him. Um, yeah. So good. So good. And, yeah. Fell in love. So. 
And so, like, when it comes to, because, you know, this, this, these series are called Rescue Angels, and I really think you and Brian, your husband, are. Um, what is your love for rescuing and fostering? Like, what, like, if you could explain to the audience listening, like, what, why is it so important to you? Um, because they need us. Um, I think is, uh, you know, I, I feel personally, um, you know, we, we created a really large scale problem, um, with pet overpopulation, um, with domesticated animals. Um, and that's aside from, from farm animals, um, you know, which is an entirely different conversation. Um, but you know, we, we created this problem and, and they're, they're the ones that suffer. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, you know, for me, it's, it's just, it's just doing what I can. And, and I feel like it's doing my part, um, to help, you know, kind of clean up that, um, for lack of a better term mess. Um, yeah, exactly. you know, uh, you know, we, if we have the skills and we have the ability and we have the resources to, to save a few lives along the way, um, that's we what, should. yeah, we should. <laughs> and so, because it's, what is really interesting, it's something that Jason was also mentioning, who is also in this series with Gibson, um, is, is this thing where, you know, this problem or like being the solution of the problem. And you also mentioned like, we are creating this problem. And if you could pinpoint kind of what is that problem? Like what, what is the biggest problem? Why are we not, uh, or, or could you say, is, is there a specific I don't know, is there a specific organization or something that is causing most of the problems? Like, for example, I feel that breeding is an extremely mm -hmm. difficult uh, subject, mm -hmm. but also a, a massive problem to, these, to this big problem that we have because people, these puppy mills and people wanting puppies instead of dogs that need us. Is that something that you could also talk a little bit about? Yeah, um, I, think, I think it's kind of, kind of trifled. Um, there's... Breeding is is obviously the the biggest aspect, um, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see breeding as as being a necessity um, or something that should be, you know, as abundant as it is um, in any way. I, I don't agree with it. Um, I think there's you know there's millions of animals dying every single year in our country alone, um, mm -hmm. you know, let alone in the world, uh, just because of space. You know, the, the money is often there, the medications, the, the resources are typically there. A lot of the times it's just space. There's just too many animals. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, breeding is, is pretty absurd to me um, yeah. that that's as abundant as it still is today. Um, I also think, you know, uh, for cats specifically, um, there's definitely, you know, community dog populations that are similar, but um, cats are much more abundant. Um, You know, we, we domesticated them and they are now breeding heavily on their own mm. in free roaming mm -hmm. communities um, because they're not spayed and neutered. Um, so, so spay and neuter is also something that I'm a big, big advocate for. Um, and we're trying to get involved with some of that locally here in our area as well. Um, our shelter is trying to start their very first uh, trap neuter release program. Wow, that's um, good. With the uh, the local kitten populations, you know, that are coming in, um, and I think, you know, thirdly, I think, in in large part, a lot of the time, it's just a lack of of empathy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you know, it's it's these backyard dogs. Yeah, that, it's just you know, a dog. It's just a dog. Exactly. It's not exactly. a problem. It's just a dog. It's only a dog. Like yes. these kind of these kind of attitudes, and would you say because you were mentioning before it's it's more happening or it's stronger happening in rural areas, right? That's what you just said. Um, I least, or... I don't know if if it's I don't know if it's more. You know, I don't I don't have statistics to to say if it's heavier in rural areas. I just know rural areas have much different resources. Yeah. Um, yeah you know, than, than bigger cities will. Mm -hmm. Um, so particularly, uh, we moved to this area a few years ago for, for my husband's job. Um, and moving here, I learned very quickly the two dogs you're going to find in our, the two breeds of dogs, um, which, um, I don't like to talk a lot about breeds because mm -hmm. yeah, we just I, spoke about that. Yeah. We, about, <laughs> yeah. Um, a dog is a dog. Um, but the two, you know, most abundant breeds that we have in our shelter are hound dogs and pit bulls. 
um, and that's because of of the population here. Um, so uh, specifically being in a, uh, a rural uh, area, we moved here um, a few years ago for my husband's job um, and something I learned pretty quickly uh, was that the two um, the two dogs that you find and the two breeds of dog that really you find in our shelters here are uh, hound dogs and pit bulls. Um, the uh, hound dogs are, are very prevalent because of the uh, hunting community around here. Um, they're often bred in abundance, uh, used for a season or through kind of their prime, uh, and then they're dumped um, and they end up, you know, the shelter's problem. Um, and then, uh, and I hate saying problem because, you know, they're, they're all blessings in my opinion, <laughs> <laughs> um, but but, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then, uh, also you see a, a large, large percentage of pit bulls, um, which I think is, tends to be, uh, pretty prevalent in, in lower income communities. Um, mm-hmm. unfortunately, um, because they're, they're wonderful, wonderful dogs. Um, yeah. Yeah. Did, <laughs> Did that answer your question? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 you did. You did. No, I think like it's, I think it's important to kind of, because it was something that you were mentioning. I think it's important to, to really, you know, I think that especially also what you were just mentioning about breeds and we were, we were earlier before we started recording this, we were talking about that, right? Like we were saying, like, I think mm-hmm. it's not very good to even be speaking about breeds because it's, it's nearly a bit racist, <laughs> Because dogs are dogs, you know, and I think, you know, as I was saying, like, I used to be a little bit like that as well, because I have a Jack Mm -hmm. Russell and Jack Russells are so cool when really I learned, you know, through my work with dogs as well and rescuing dogs and 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 fighting dog fighting and all that stuff that a dog really is a dog, you know, and I I have never met a dog in my life who I don't instantly love. Um, yeah. and it doesn't really matter. It's the same with people, you know, I'm not going to judge someone just because they are American or, or Russian or Dutch or, you know, it's like, we also have to be compassionate towards all beings. So I think that like just looking at a breed is, yeah, is yeah, just, it's discriminating, <laughs> you know, it's you're just discriminating. Um, but it is an interesting thing because is it something that do you feel, I don't know, judged or do you feel that people are misunderstanding uh, pit bulls in general? Like, is there, I think there's, a, 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 they have a bad name in general, don't they? Yes. Um, a hundred, a hundred percent. I think that they're discriminated against. Um, and that's, uh, it's very apparent. Um, uh, right now in uh, Denver, Colorado um, is a good example. They just uh, vetoed. They were trying to overturn a 30 year ban of pit bulls in the city uh, and it was overturned by the mayor. Yeah. Um, so that, yeah. For, for no reason. Um, <laughs> you know, they, they, they claim that they're a, you know, a, a danger to the public. Um, but right now it's just, it's just the next breed that's being discriminated against. Um, decades ago, it was Rottweilers. Then it was, yeah. German shepherds, then it was Dobermans, um, and and pit bulls are just uh, just the chosen breed, um, mm-hmm. in my opinion. They're strong dogs, don't get me wrong, you know, but but they're they're also just as gentle and sweet and loving. They're so soft, you know. I know a lot of people who have pit bulls, and I have had a lot of uh, experience with pit bulls where, like. Most people that I know make the worst guard dogs because they are just too, like, they wouldn't even care. Like, they are so sweet and kind and loving and, uh, and I think very much misunderstood, you know, with, and by, by humans and dogs, you know, like, but just not, they're not understood that they are just, you know, loving dogs, you know, and for some reason, because, yeah, because the way they look or because, and Mm -hmm. yeah, they, they have this kind of I don't know bad name which is weird and exactly it's funny how you were mentioning like are we just picking okay so this 10 years it's going to be the pit bulls and on the other 10 years it will be the rottweilers again like it's just funny how we need to somehow have you know I don't know like we need to point our finger to a certain breed or something it seems like you know there has to be that that enemy I think yeah 